Okay, thank you very much. And uh, welcome to this virtual cabinet meeting. It's being conducted with members and officers at various locations, communicating via audio, video and online. Uh, there are also uh, uh, members of the public who have an opportunity to, to listen and view proceedings and members of the press, and we welcome them too. Before the meeting starts, I would like to invite the committee member and scrutiny manager to explain how proceedings will work and to confirm that members are, and officers are in attendance. Thank you, Chair. Um, so when I call your name, can you please um, confirm that you can hear and be heard? Councillor Ian Albert. Yes. Councillor Judy Billing. Yes, I'm sorry, I'm so dark. <laughs> Councillor Paul Clark. I'm a lot darker than uh, Judy is, but I can hear you. Thank you. Councillor Elizabeth Dennis Harburg. Here. Councillor Gary Grindle. Hello. Councillor Keith Hoskins. Yes, good evening. Councillor Steve Jarvis. Yes, I'm here. Councillor Steers Hanscom. Yes, I'm here. Uh, Councillor Helen Oliver. Yes, I'm here. Carol Stania. I'm here. Ruth Brown. Present. And um, Councillor Kate Aspinwall. Oh, you're muted, Kate. I'm here, hi. Thank you. Officers, um, Ian Fullstone. Good evening. Ian Cooper. Yes, I'm here. Jeanette Thompson. Evening. Howard Crompton. I'm here. Go Duffersey. Present. Nigel Smith. Present. Ruben Ivo. Present. William Edwards. Good evening. Big Godfrey, you're here, we know. Uh, Jerry Goodwin. Yep, I'm here. Um, have I missed anybody? I don't believe I have. Um, thank you. The meeting is being streamed live on the Council's YouTube channel and also recorded via Zoom. If live streaming fails, the meeting will adjourn. If the live stream cannot be restored within a reasonable period, then the remaining business will be considered at a later date. Please stay in view of the camera at all times. If for any reason the meeting is not corporate, an officer will notify attendees. The meeting will adjourn immediately. Once the meeting is corporate, the meeting will resume. If connection cannot be restored within a reasonable period, then the remaining business will be considered at a later date. Only members present for the entire debate and consideration of an item are entitled to vote. If a remote member loses connection, the chair may adjourn the meeting for a short period to enable connection to be re-established. If the chair does not adjourn the meeting, the member will be deemed to have left the meeting at the point of failure and deemed to have returned at the point of re-establishment. Please ensure that your mobile phones and other noise emitting devices are muted. And please activate the mute button on your tablet or computer, computer when you're not speaking or in case of um, Councillor Clark on your phone. If a member wishes to speak, they should use the raise hand button um, and, and you all know where that is. Um, remember to unmute your microphone when uh, requested to speak. Um, when requested to vote, the voting will be in the usual manner via the green tick for yes, red cross for no and uh, blue hand for abstain. Uh, and again, you know where all those are. There are part two papers for this evening's meeting. And when the council resolves to move into part two, the host will ask members and relevant officers to join a breakout room, which you will need to accept. You will automatically be transferred into the breakout room, which is where the part two discussions will be held. Please note that there will be a short delay whilst this happens. Once the part two discussions have concluded, members will need to move back into the public part of the meeting. Whilst the part two discussions are happening, the live stream of the meeting will not have ceased. It will have continued with a holding notice. To leave the breakout room, uh, I think you'll know by now, you press the leave breakout room and not leave meeting button. And the system will then automatically redirect you back into the public part of the meeting. You will automatically be muted when you return. Has anyone any questions before we start? No, in that case, I'll hand over to Councillor Martin Steers Hanscom, the chair. Thank, Thank you. you very, 
Um, and first of all, item one is apologies for absence. I have none notified. Are there any apologies? No, in which case, item two, notification of there is none. Uh, my name in accordance with the policy, this meeting is audio recorded as well as the audio recordings available to view on MOB.com and the film recorded by NHTC channel. I am reminded that this was declared into emergency. This is a serious decision, and as, as this is an emergency, all of the officers and members have in mind as we have our various roles for the benefit of the industry. Reminded to make. Austin, you're massively breaking up. Ah. Just so you know. Right. Is that any better? Members are reminded to make declarations of interest before an item. The detailed reminder about this and speaking right set under chair's announcements on the agenda. Um, the agenda in the order published up to and including item 13. We will then so take the part two items, item 16, care line future provision, and item 17 adjacent to one North End door. We will then return to part one to take part one decisions on item being at the end of the meeting. Item four, there is no part public participation. Um, item five is items referred from other committees. Uh, the one, item 5A is difference from finance, audit and risks, and that, um, as you asked for more now, present Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really sorry, Martin, but you just broke up there. But could somebody? Um, I don't have the agenda in front of me. Would somebody just be able to remind me which bit it is that you now? This want? is the item on on risk. I'm having to re-log in because my tablet's logged me out, so I haven't got it immediately in front of me at the moment. It's, it's the risk management update from far. Okay, just bear with me one moment, then, just while I. Make sure that I've got the right one in front of me. Okay, right. yeah, thank you very much. Sorry, the, the last FAR meeting that we had was very, very uh, thorough, but there was an awful lot going on. Um, so I've got a number of things to bring to you this evening. And this first one is risk management update. So uh, what we've recommended to Cabinet as a committee, and there was a, a lot of discussion around this item, um, was that the uh, corporate risk for antisocial behaviour on council facilities be retained at a score of seven and not, as was previously suggested, reduced to five. There was a lot of discussion around that, namely around the, uh, the, the, the potential for future risk in terms of where we are as a, with, the, with the economy where it is um, and behaviour that we're seeing across, across the town. So there was... While there was widespread acknowledgement that a lot of work has been done and a lot of really good work has been done, that actually where we are now uh, with COVID and uh, the, you know, the, the items that we, or the, the state that of, the, of the economy as it is um, and, and what we are facing, that actually we felt that that remained a, a higher risk. So uh, yeah, we, the committee would like that to be retained at a risk score of seven and not reduced. Again, uh, around the uh, novel, novel coronavirus risk, uh, the corporate risk, we recommend as a committee that that get retained at a risk score of nine and not reduced to eight. Uh, the suggestion around the reduction to eight was around the work that had already been done. The, um, the, the committee felt that there was so much uncertainty ahead of us that actually we think that that should re be retained at a risk score of nine, which is as you'll know, the maximum score. Uh, that the new corporate risk uh, around the leisure management contract be proposed at a risk score of eight. That came to us as that recommendation we agreed. And that the route optimization of collection rounds risk be archived. I will later probably um, talk to you from an O and S uh, with that hat on. And actually, uh, as a committee, we decided that that sits within ONS as. Um, and myself and the chair of ONS have had long discussions about that. That now sits there. It is something that we need to look back on and not something that is uh, an issue in the future. And so we would like to archive that risk off of there. 
Uh, as I say, there was a really good discussion and uh, those are the recommendations that we bring to you this evening. Thank you very much, Kate. Um, Councillor Ian Elbert. Cheers, sure, thanks, Chair, and thanks to Kate and the committee for their uh, considerations. And I really perhaps just to quickly say that we're happy, or well, I'm certainly happy to, to recommend to Cabinet that we support the, the four recommendations uh, here. I, I think there's a judgment call around, around the antisocial behaviour risk, but we do take on board what uh, FAR have said, and we will leave, we're certainly proposed to leave that score as a seven. We will review the risk at forthcoming risk management group meetings, particularly probably the one in February, to, to consider whether we can safely lower the score then, because we don't want to, to keep it there as a, unnecessarily as a, as a corporate risk. Um, I think there's a judgment call around, around item two, the recommendations as to whether the novel, corona, novel coronavirus corporate risk should be retained at nine. But I think on balance, particularly bearing in mind things that have happened since the uh, far, I think nine, I'm again happy to accept to accept nine. And then the other two recommendations were as per the risk management group. So hope the cabinet could accept those four proposals from, from far. So I take it you're moving those um, as the uh, recommendations to Cabinet? Yeah, yes, Chair. Yeah. OK, I'm happy to second that. Is there any further discussion? Uh, no, in that case, sure, we'll put those recommendations to the vote. That is clearly carried. So thank you very much. Um, moving back to the other recommendations from that committee, we have um, item five, which we'll take with item nine, five C, which we'll take with 10, five D with 11. And then we have a from overview and scrutiny, we'll take with item 16. So that deals with the uh, referrals move on to our six, which is council plan and council objectives. And that, and I hopefully I'll uh, log back in. No, I won't to get hold of my agenda for the main part of the council plan. And that's down to me initially to introduce the item. Um, obviously the council plan has now through all its stages from initial decisions to consideration by full council and back to cabinet to look for us to look at our recommendations to council. Um, the objectives agreed at the last cabinet meeting and uh, we're looking particularly at the appendices this evening. Uh, we picked up one or two minor typos and if anyone notices any more, um, then um, we'll pick those up and, and um, correct that before it goes to council. We additionally have another addendum and thank you to, to uh, Keith and Helen for putting that together. Uh, Appendix C, um, some achievements in, in the last year, so we're considering those as well. So I want to thank Ruben and his colleagues for the work that's been on offices in the campaign, and together with all the, um, the, the direct staff as we looked at the different areas. So it's uh, Ruben. Anything to add? Um, no, other than that, an awful lot of work has gone into this by lots and lots of people. So it was Indeed. a real group effort to get this done, and the workshops are very well attended. So, yes. Yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I will move the recommendations which you see before you, uh, including the uh, addendum to um, Appendix C. Um, Councillor Clark, do you want to come in? Yes, please. Uh, I'm happy to second your Thank you. your proposal. Thanks very much. Any further discussion? Um, it has gone through a lot of discussion already, so that doesn't greatly surprise me. So, uh, if we can move to the vote. Uh, thanks very much. That's clearly carried. Hillary. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, yes, Paul. Yes, Councillor. How am I meant to be voting? 
Um, if you just tell us what you want to vote. It's, it's right, because I, I didn't know whether to interrupt, so I, I'm happy to vote in favour. Okay, I'll try and remember you. to ask you each time, Councillor. Yeah, that, that thank was... You. Thank you. That was unanimous, I think. So thank you. OK, um, so we Chair, move Chair, on. Um, Chair, can I, so can I just ask a question on that? Because I, I wouldn't want this to come up at, at council for that the cabinet is doing one thing and council is doing another. There is a thing that says that you need to be able to see someone and Hillary read out at the start of the meeting. And I think that's why Councillor Clark was right to ask the question that because we can't actually see him at the moment yeah i think i think and so i do think it's yeah. important that we you chair yeah. that you clarify this because i don't want this to come back at council to say oh well we could you know you you allowed councillor clark to vote at cabinet but you didn't let me vote at council when you couldn't see me i think we have to be consistent and therefore um i think in any case it was a uh, all those who yes. were able to be seen voted in favor i think yeah. Um, if we have a problem later on, but I will, I will take it that under our rules, um, unfortunately, Paul, you won't be able to vote this evening. However, obviously you can speak. Uh, that's particularly important as I'm about to ask you to introduce the uh, item seven, which is the strategic planning matters. Uh, you, you've, you're muted, Paul, at the moment. That's better. I lose track with the star sixes because I thought we allowed Councillor Davidson to partake, although we couldn't see him. But that I'll we, take advisement on. I think, um, yeah, I think unless, yeah, we couldn't see him, uh, and we he was listening on the phone, which is what I'm doing. But we can't see you. All right. All oh, right. See, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll accept that. Sorry, Paul. I'm, I'm, this, I'm not yeah. trying to be picky. I'm just trying to no. to recognise that we that, that someone will ask this question, a difficult question, at the next council meeting. Otherwise, yeah. No, yeah. I think we have to be consistent. I've got Judy wants to come in. I wanted to make the same point, really, because um, it does seem to have been drummed into us that we have to be able to be seen to be held to be voting members of a meeting and it's really bureaucratic and it's really boring and I actually think it's wrong but that's not the point um I'm just agreeing with Ian that we have to be yeah. consistent otherwise we're in big trouble where cabinet um is a different political composition from the rest of council and we could be yeah. in big trouble no you're, you're quite right I'll go, I'll go, Judy. and I'll go, I have ruled so I'll, I'll ruin that yeah. And uh, as I said, I did accept your ruling. Yeah. So, uh, thank you, Paul, and I appreciate that that's difficult. So uh, we're moving on to item seven, the strategic planning matters. Right, you have, yeah, strategic planning. Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, strategic planning matters. Um, there is a couple of things. Um, Bulldog by Grave and Clothall, uh, neighbourhood plan. There is there were some technical difficulties. Came back from the inspector. What you have before you is a technical way forward to address those. So we are going forward. The St Albans local plan. Um, the inspector has uh, questioned the duty to cooperate by the council has not been met. They are being invited to withdraw it, or it will be not not recommended. So that's where they are. Obviously, our one, we have the hearings due to be held later this month. There is obviously still question marks about the housing numbers where they were reduced. That is on, ongoing. I don't think I, due to technical things, there's not a lot more I can say. It could be that I might get the internet back at some stage, in which case uh, you'll see my smiling face in a bit. Thank you very much, Paul, and thank you for updating us on those and uh, from, from that position. Um, Nigel, is anything you want to add at that point? Um, I think the only other update, thank you, Chair, for, um, for sort of factual sake, is at 8.27 in the report, it refers to the design SPD um, being presented to this meeting. And as you'll be aware, that's no longer on the agenda following overview and scrutiny. Yeah. Well, I was leaving that to item eight. <laughs> Okay, it does come up in the text of item seven as well. So yeah, that's true. Okay, thanks very much. I think this is a matter for 
for notes. Um, and so I'm sure we we can, do we need to vote on this? Um, I think we will agree to note it. Yeah, I don't think we need to go through the palaver voting on that. Okay, and we note that and also note the additional item on the, the uh, Bygrave Bulldog, etc. cetera, um, local, what's it? Okay, so um, we then move on to item eight and that we've already indicated that item eight has been withdrawn. There was a big discussion at overview and scrutiny and to respond appropriately to the discussion there, um, we have agreed to withdraw that and it will come back to the next um, cabinet meeting. So, Mr Chairman, yep. sorry, can, it's all right, doing it. Ah, Paul, we can see you. Okay, now I need to unmute yourself. Yep. Sorry, I said hard luck, I'm here. How long for? I don't know. Okay, well, welcome back. Um, okay, so we move on to item nine. There is first. Sorry to interrupt, Chair. There were a couple of recommendations on the addendum that you uh, you might need to uh, vote right, on. Right. Okay. Um, right. That's probably on my notes. So I, I need three hands to do this. <laughs> so let me find my notes. Yes. Thank you. So the recommendation. Um, it's 2.2 now, um, 2.1 was what we've just done and noted the report. Um, and the second one, the service director regulatory in consultation with the executive member of planning and transport, one develops modifications to the examiner's recommendation in consultation with the Baldock, Bygrave and Clothall neighborhood um, planning group, and two approves public consultation as modifications to inform a decision on the inspector's report to be made at cabinet by cabinet at the earliest opportunity. Uh, so we do need to vote on that. Yes, Chair, oh. I would. Sorry, I've moved and I, I take it Paul was seconding. If I'm allowed to, yes, but I won't vote as I wasn't visible for the uh, whole section. Okay, thank you. So that is clear. Can I suggest, Chair, that, that somebody else seconds it? Uh, I'll, I'll second Martin if it's a problem. Yeah. Thank you very much, Keith. Yeah, yeah. I think, yes. No. Okay. Okay. Let's let's do it by the book. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's clearly carried. Okay. Move on to item nine. There is first of all a reference from Fire Committee. Um, Kate, I don't know if you want to speak to that, or would that be picked up in the uh, the general report? Uh, I'm sorry, Martin, you're going to have to be explicit about what it is because I'm juggling. Right. This is first quarter, first quarter revenue monitoring. This was discussed by Farley. Yeah. If, if, it's, if it's helpful, Chair, I'd be happy to introduce it. My understanding is far agreed the um the contents of the of the report but do you want me to introduce it and then maybe yeah if Kate okay. can come back if she's got any sort of questions or or yeah, is, that, wrong. is that is that okay yeah, i think that's perfect. easiest and i think i'll do that for the other items yeah. as well okay Cheers. thanks Ian. thanks really yeah nice. i mean just brief try and briefly to, to, to move this and the recommendations 2.1 2.4 the budget variance as i say are set out in in table three um, note the majority of these relate to the impacts of COVID and uh, at our last cabinet meeting we considered a report on the financial impacts of, of COVID. The numbers in that report were generally higher than those presented here. The intention of the specific COVID report was to provide a realistic bad case impact. That was to show that the council reserves were sufficient that we didn't need to set an emergency budget. The revenue monitoring report takes a less severe approach and most of the reported variances reflect what has happened to date only. The commentary in the table provides an explanation of any differences. To avoid painting too positive a picture, as described in paragraphs 8.16 and 8.17, only some of the COVID-19 grant has been applied at this stage. Now, paragraph 8.16 mentions the government's income guarantee in relation to COVID. You I think cabinet colleagues will have, have seen some additional advice uh, on that that we, we circulated to you. You may remember the council are required to fund the first 5% of losses and then 25% of the remainder. It's now been confirmed that 
the 5% only relates to the specific areas where the council makes a claim. So for areas where there's been no or a very small impact, the council won't make a claim and therefore doesn't have to include the budget for these areas in calculating that 5%. Fortunately, it's also been confirmed that the scope of what is included isn't as wide as first thought. The guarantee only covers income from sales, fees and charges where demand has been impacted by COVID-19, either due to lockdown or the ongoing economic and service recovery. And this means that lost income from recycled materials and garden waste are not covered. The former because it's a drop in prices that's caused the lost income and the latter because social distancing, sickness and self-isolating means it wasn't feasible to provide a service for the period. However, based on the guidance, it is now thought the lost trade waste income will be covered, whereas previously it was thought that it wouldn't be. In terms of the latest forecast, income, especially parking income, is generally recovering more quickly than forecast, which is welcome. But the reduced coverage of the income guarantee has more than more than set off that, uh, offset that. So overall net income now to our, our, our funds is now forecast at around 1.5 million. And Will Chair, I'd just finally like to, to point out paragraph 8.3 and 8.4 on hitching market. This is subject to a recommendation 2.4 to write off the debtor invoices. However, there is positive news about the market with a good number of new traders and increased footfall as part of our new working together arrangements. And I think it's really important here to especially thank um, uh, council officers, Chloe Gray and Steve Crowley for all their work on this. And of course, my executive colleagues, Helen Oliver and Keith Hoskins, I think for making a really good fist at this. So thanks to them, I move the report and the recommendations 2.1 uh, to 2.4. Thank you very much, Ian. Um, I will second the recommendations. Um, any discussion? Uh, can hey, I? Do you want to come in? Yeah, sure. So just to just to discuss. Obviously, this was um, this was uh, brought too far. There wasn't there wasn't an awful lot of um, of uh, questions around it. There was a good level of scrutiny, uh, in particular around Ian's point um, around the. The government estimates and what they were what they were predicated up upon uh, so there was a good level of scrutiny on that there was um yeah high level discussion around it but overall generally satisfied um and uh yeah quite pleased to see the the opportunity to write off that debt for hitching market okay thank you very much um if there are no other contributions can we move to the vote That is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. We then move on to item 10. And again, if I ask you to introduce it, Ian, and then I'll invite um, Kate to come in with comments from fire as appropriate. Yeah, um, um, and again, obviously trying just to briefly to, to move that and the recommendations uh, 2.1 to 2.4. Um, the, the COVID-19 report that we did in July agreed some changes to the capital budgets already, which is the reason that the table two in the report is, is fairly short this time. We are, of course, continuing to review the capital programme as we reported uh, previously. Uh, paragraph 8.9 confirms that the limit of 5 million on the council's current account has now been reinstated. This means that balances will now be kept under 5 million as the potential need for short-term cash has subsided. Paragraph 8.10 details the poor returns that the council is now getting on investments, which resulted in a budgeted shortfall of 115,000, which was included in the revenue monitor report. And as I say separately, we are looking to do a review of, our, of where our investments are held. But I, in fairness to say, I don't anticipate that without increasing risk significantly, there will be much room for manoeuvre around the, the uh, investment holdings and locations but uh, so chair i'm happy to move the report and the recommendations uh, to cabinet 2.1 to 2.4 on page 115 and 116 of the agenda thank you very much ian um I, again i will second that um any discussion from um anyone does um any discussion from fire that you always Sorry, again, 
And I don't have this, these papers in front of me because I don't have them on my mod gov. So if you could just be really clear about which elements that we're discussing, that'd be helpful. I've gathered, yes. but it, I'm playing catch up here. Um, so in terms of our conversation around this, um, let me just just bear with me one moment. Uh, no, I'm really satisfied with yeah. what we presented, very satisfied with um, certainly Ian's um, pricey for us there as well. Uh, yeah, that gives a good summary of what was discussed at FAR. Um, and yeah, that, that there's nothing more to add from us. There. Thanks, thanks very much, Kate. I appreciate it's very difficult in this uh, juggling papers and, and items on screens and so on. So thank you very much for that. Um, any further discussion? If not, can we then move to the votes? That's uh, carried unanimously then. Thank you very much. Uh, we then move to rather meaty item, the medium term financial strategy. And again, um, Ian, will you introduce? Yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously the, this, the, obviously this is a, a you know, a, a report that, um, you know, cabinet have, uh, have seen discussed and clearly we now want to take this to, uh, to full to full council, and they're obviously asking you to adopt the the strategy as attached at uh, Appendix A. Um, and, and I think it's clearly important for us as a council and vital that we have a medium term financial strategy, particularly when setting the council plan, as we need to know what funding is available for those plans. Of course, the real problem is that from government that we haven't been given that certainty both in year in terms of the additional money that they have promised us for uh, uh, for actually supporting us uh, as much as as we needed was you know was was said if i paraphrase but but in reality we we still have a shortfall as i reported earlier and of course separately is yet again we've had a postponement i i, I set for understandable reasons in the uh, spending review and the review that will will come in terms of of funding arrangements for for local authorities, which means that yet again we'll be faced with a a one year settlement in in the next financial year, and the ability to be able to do medium term financial plans in this circumstances is by its nature limited and does amount to some pretty really uh, est careful estimations on behalf of the, our finance team. So particularly thanks to, to uh, Ian Cooper and his team for all their work um, uh, on this and actually producing the paper in front of us this evening. The overall message from the report is there is unlikely to be any uh, uh, or any limited amounts of additional funding available and the council will need to review what it spends its money on. Now, that doesn't mean that the council plan can't set aspirations of what it would like to achieve, but it does mean that as we go through the more detailed process, they will need to review of when and to what extent things can be achieved to make sure we have that in alignment. Now, that detail is, is, is reported in Appendix A, and perhaps just a, a very brief summary here. The section starting at paragraph 2.6 details the forecast uh, impacts of COVID-19. This is made up to our a hit to our reserves in 2021 where, as we fund the additional expenditure and lost income that is not covered by the government grant on the income guarantee. There will be an impact on council tax income this year arising partly from subdued housing growth, but mainly due to increased eligibility for council tax reduction. There is also a significant potential impact on business rates income where businesses are unable to pay the rates they owe. Uh, due to the way that council tax and business rates are accounted for, the actual financial impact will be in the next year, 2021-22. We'll also need to consider the longer term impacts. And there is a real risk that income will not return to normal levels next year. And paragraph 2.9 considers some sensitivities in relation to this. And another big concern is the impact on the council tax base as detailed uh, in, in paragraph 2.8. 2 
Now, I, I, I do want perhaps perhaps at the the, the full uh, council meeting maybe to go into a little more detail around what the report says in relation to the local plan. It's certainly not saying there's no need for housing growth, nor is it actually saying there'll be no housing housing growth. Um, but, but I think it's very clear that whilst it, it may not explicitly say it, the medium term financial strategy still assumes the local plan will be adopted. Forecasts in the medium and longer term are likely to be even worse if it wasn't adopted. And it should be noted that the medium term financial strategy is also a plan with a five year time horizon. And there will be a time lag between the adoption of the local plan and people moving in to the properties and starting to pay council tax. But we all recognise there's some real challenges, both on this and, of course, around the local plan itself, where I know colleagues have some real concerns around that, that plan. But that time lag is likely to be longer than usual in a period where we are faced with the economic conditions as they are at the moment, and we've still got potential Brexit impacts to add into that, that mix. Um, and as detailed in paragraph 2.32, there is a consideration of some positive outcomes that would affect the, the medium term financial strategy. One of those is economic recovery, um, which could result in housing growth in later years, which could include some degree of catch up. But that would then provide more funding than is currently forecast and mean a reduced impact on existing service delivery. But a lot of uncertainties and there around that those, those housing numbers, as, as I know that, that we've, we've discussed in elsewhere in, in Cabinet. As detailed in paragraph 2.11, the pay award for the 2021 has now been agreed at 2.75%. This has been now used for future years although the settlement was for one year only, and the future years will be subject to further negotiation. Actual future pay deals might be less if economic conditions mean that we have low price inflation. As detailed in 2.22, we have high uncertainty as to what our future funding will be, as I mentioned. The new funding formula and business rate changes have been delayed again uh, for implementation until 22-23. Funding next year will be on the same basis as this year, and it is therefore assumed at the moment that negative RSG won't, will not apply. However, we can't be sure about this. So the, the strategy does consider the impact if it was to apply, which would be a further hit on our reserves. And the, tablet, the, the table in paragraph 2.29 shows that 2.65 million of annual savings might be required by 25-26. The table also profiles the timing and delivery of these savings. The proposed timing maintains a general fund balance in excess of 6 million and therefore provides some protection against the forecast getting worse. Although it should be noted that the strategy and council budget will be kept uh, under regular review. Finally, Chair, I would just like to say paragraph 2.33 sets out the required actions from the strategy. And one of those things is that we are kicking off a budget review challenge group uh, next month that we will begin to look um, at the possibilities for savings, additional income, changes and different ways of actually delivering the services of the council that we can then begin to feed into the budget workshops that will take place cross party in November and the administration and the, and the opposition uh, workshops. And obviously then we'll feed into the considerations of cabinet and full council in December, January and up to the budget setting in, in February uh, next year. So Chair, I'd like to move the adoption of the medium term uh, financial strategy as attached to Appendix A and obviously happy and obviously uh, Ian Cooper, I would be happy to pick up any specific questions that you might have on it. I move. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ian. I, I, I will second that. And I, I would also say that, uh, I mean, always the our, um, financial team and, and, and Mr. Cooper work extremely hard, but I think this year it's been way beyond the call of duty. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the amount of work that's been put in has been absolutely amazing. And we're very well served by, um, by Ian and his team. Um, I note that the um, FAR committee is recommending the adoption of the uh, strategy. Um, Kate, do you have anything to add at, at that point? I do. Thank you, Martin. Um, this was uh, obviously a very significant report and received a lot of attention at the committee. Um, there was a good discussion 
um, around uh, and scrutiny around this kind of uh, the council tax reduction and the increase in, in claimants there and what that would mean for um, our council tax base in terms of what we were uh, what we were uh, collecting or able to collect and then obviously the implications therein of the local plans. So there was good scrutiny there and good good satisfaction levels from the committee on the um, on the answers that came through from uh, both Ian and Ian Ian and Ian Ian squared. Um, uh, there was uh, th something that's not been mentioned uh, that has also not been built into um, assumptions because there is, as Ian said, uh, such a lot of uncertainty was uh, the, the any potential issues around Brexit. Um, so we did we did do a bit of scrutiny on that. But I think it's just worth picking up on. And again, just we we had a look at, at that pay deal and, and all agreed that two point seven five was a very very good. Um, uh, forecast to put uh, it was it was generous uh, based on what we think the unions will do and, and, and how that pay uh, will progress in the next few years so obviously with a one-year pay deal it's very difficult to make any kind of accurate forecasting but we felt that that was the right move so yeah good level of scrutiny very good level of discussion around this and very happy to recommend and and also just want to say uh, what an incredibly uh, difficult and challenging job that has been done incredibly well by our team. So thank you, Ian. Keep it thank you very much, Kate. Um, any other discussion on this item? If not, then um, let's move to the vote, please. That is uh, clearly carried. Thank you very much. We then move on to the uh, Council Tax Re Reduction Scheme. Again, it's Councillor Ian Albert to, to, to move, but with a different director. Uh, yes, and, 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 and I wasn't sure whether to mention this at this paper, but, uh, or, or indeed one of the next two following, but I would like, I think perhaps to particularly mark that I think this is, um, this will be, uh, Howard Crompton, the service director for this area's last meeting in this particular role uh, mm. uh, for uh, for cabinet, he has a different role uh, coming up, which I very much very much welcome. But it is his last, so I'd, I'd particularly like to the chair to thank Howard and indeed all of Howard's team because I know he can't do it on his own, and I think we've got Geraldine here uh, this evening. But to thank Howard and his team all. The support they've certainly given me since I've been on the council and been an executive uh, member and I know I'm sure that applies to all of the uh, councillors uh, here and indeed those not here so thanks and and good luck in your retirement uh, Howard although we will of course still be still be still be seeing you so but thank you um for all the support you've given and uh, I hope, obviously I'm sure that cabinet colleagues will will, yeah, will endorse yeah. that um, to just briefly to move this paper, it was the intention, Chair, this year to, to do a full review of the Council Tax Reduction Scheme, but the proposal is that we postpone that. Uh, I think both in terms of kind of work levels, but also I think the general, I think, uncertainty about, about the Council Tax Reduction Scheme, the take up of it, the, and, and where we are, I think, made modelling what a new scheme might look like or an amended scheme might look like very difficult in the, the current circumstances. So what I am proposing is reluctantly, but I think it is the, absolutely the right thing to do, that note that we will that we will review, um, the, uh, do a full review of the council tax reduction scheme in the next financial year, and that's a commitment that we'll certainly wish wish to uh, you know to make as an, an administration. We aren't proposing any changes uh, at this time. We will need to consult on it, but we aren't proposing any changes to the council tax reduction scheme for the next financial year there's nothing there's nothing new or indeed minor that we uh, that is sort of out on the stocks that we need to make uh, at this time so it is the proposal that we leave the scheme remain unchanged for the next uh, for the next for the next financial year and finally in terms of item 2.3 I, I would like that, to sort of consider how we that we will pick up your colleagues will remember that there is this um, we've been we have this sort of fund that we have been uh, that we we pay out to to the parishes, towns, and community uh, council. 
um, that uh, that it, that we agreed in the last budget round, we can uh, we can and, and certainly should consider whether we could continue with that for in the next next period. I, you know, my 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 reasoning at the moment is that we should, but but we do need to take account of our full financial settlement and and take a view on that when we come to the budget setting round. Uh, in the in in February and obviously through the through the budget workshop. So so I think the proposal there is that we we delegate that uh, whether we continue with that that funding um, through you know through obviously the the service director for the area in consultation with with me and we'll obviously look at that as part of the financial settlement for 2122 and in our proposals that we bring uh, to cabinet and full full council uh, for. For the next for the next financial year. So on that note, uh, Chair, I'd like just to move the recommendations in paper two point one and and two point four for cabinet. Okay, thank you very much. I will second those. Um, any discussion on the CTRS? Um, I'd like to echo your comments uh, of our thanks to Howard for his many years of, of very valuable service to us and. Uh, like you, Howard's always been a great support and somebody I can go to if I've got a, a daft question and he, um, he, he's always willing to answer them. So again, huge amount of thanks to Howard in his retirement. But um, I, I can vouch for the fact that when you retire, you always end up doing something else. So, you know, we're, we're pleased that you're doing spending some of that time with us on, on other things, Howard. So um, any discussion on, on the, any more discussion on the item? If not, can we move to the vote on that? Thank you very much, that is clearly carried. Okay, we then move on to, and I'm told this is a tidy up, uh, item 13, consolidation of business rates and council tax discretionary policies. So Ian, over to you again. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and I'm pleased to say that there's a lot of pages here, but 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 there's very few recommendations and some really nice simple things to do. This is one of our sort of parting gifts from from from, from Howard and uh, and obviously his team as uh, as as well in terms of actually getting all our all our sort of our policies together in one in one place and in one easy place that we can both actually understand and we can publish. And we can publish. So what we're asking you to do is to approve Appendix 1 and Appendix 2, um, which are the discretionary non-domestic rate relief policy and the council tax discretionary reduction in liability policy. There aren't any uh, changes or new policies to be added or need approval by Cabinet. And also separately, to hopefully to, to add, save some time and, and certainly make sure that the policy is kept under, these policies are kept under review, that we will formally review them every three years, but we're giving authority or we're proposing that we give authority to make minor amendments to be delegated to the service director uh, for customers in consultation with the executive member for finance and IT, which obviously save them coming to full cabinet just to make some very much some minor minor changes. So on that note, I'd just like to propose that we accept recommendations 2.1 and 2.3 before you, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Again, I will second that. Any discussion? Uh, no, in that case, we'll move to the votes. Martin. Oh, Paul, sorry. Yes, I didn't see your hand. Yeah. No, that's all right. I wasn't in. No, that was actually because I'm abstaining. I wasn't in full shot for the whole debate. The okay. uh, right. internet was on the frizz, so I'm abstaining on this one. Okay, but the, the item is clearly carried. So thank you very much. And, and that, that's noted. Um, okay, so then, as I indicated at the beginning, we will take the, the uh, item 16 and 17 in, in part two. So I, I am moving that under section 108, number four of the Local Government Act 1972, the public and press be excluded from the meeting for the okay. following items. Sorry, does the declarations need to be made by the relevant county councillors if they're going to do it now, please, before you go into private sessions? Okay, I don't know whether they want right, to be a thank you for that. Or Yes, okay, yeah, no, that makes thank sense. You. Chair, I believe that I am a, a, a relevant county councillor of whom you speak, um, and so I will declare an interest in this issue 
which affects both the district council and the county council. But I don't think that there's any um, serious pecuniary interest that I have. Um, it's just to, to, for people to be absolutely clear that I do um, occupy both both um, fields, as it Thank were. You. Thank you, Judy and Steve. Yeah, I'd also like to declare that I'm a member of Hearts County Council, but I don't have a pecuniary interest. Okay, thank you very much. So I then, I got halfway through reading through the declaration. I suppose I better start again. Under section 100A of four of the Local Government Act 1972, public and press be excluded for the following item on the grounds that it involves the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraph three of part one of schedule 12A of the said act. So can, is that seconded? Happy to second, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Paul. So if we move to the votes. That is clearly carried. So we then uh, ask Hillary to move us into, or Vic to move us into part two.
So Vic, if you um, wouldn't mind taking down the um, notice uh, that we are, thank you very much. Okay, I'm, I believe we need to do a quick roll call again, don't we, Hilary? Uh, yes, Chair, if you don't mind, I'll just call surnames again. Um, this makes it slightly quicker. Um, Albert? Yes. Billing? Yeah. Mark. Present. Dennis Harburg? Yeah. Grindle? Yeah. Hoskins? Yeah. Jarvis? Yeah. Piers Hanscom? Yeah. Oliver? Dania? Yes. Brown? Yes. As Aspinwall? Yeah. Um, Mantle? Yes. Um, officers Fullstone? Present. Cooper? Yeah, yeah. Thompson? Present. Thompson? Yeah. Lovesy? Present. We've gone, we've gone. Uh, Edwards? Present. Uh, Goodwin? I think she's gone, um, and uh, Godfrey. He's not going to <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you very much, Hilary. Uh, we simply now uh, have to go back to item 14. Um, the part two, uh, obviously, part that we, we have um, discussed already. I don't know, Gary, is there anything further to add at this point, uh, or we simply, simply move the... I don't think there's actually, any more that can be added. I think we'd just be ending up keeping people here for no reason if we <laughs> debate the same okay. thing again. But. So we, we are looking at the, uh, the, the, the future of the care line provision and the uh, report is in front of you. We have in part two made an amendment to the report. So um, I will uh, move uh, that the, and if I can find the relevant piece of paper or yeah. The, Happy to second chair. Yeah, the cabinet note the report and that the service director customers and the service director um, resources in consultation with the executive member for housing and environmental health and the executive member for finance and IT be authorised to continue discussions with Hertfordshire County Council and enter into uh, a formal agreement for the expansion of the care line service, provided this remains cost neutral for the council. So. Uh, that's been moved and Gary has seconded. Um, is there any discussion? Uh, no, then we move to the vote. Thank you very much, everyone. That is clearly carried. Um, okay, so thank you very much, everyone. I think um, if I go back to my notes that um, brings us to the end of the meeting. So thank you all for your attendance. And um, I'm going to en enjoy a couple of days off after today. So um, I'm leave everything in the capable hands of, of Councillor Clark and, and other colleagues. So thank you all.